Hi kids. Um, I hope you guys had an amazing week and um, you're still practicing safe distancing and um, are slowly but surely seeing things try to get back to normal. But um, this is our second to last virtual lesson. Uh, I wanted to discuss today lesson um, 32, which is page. Sixty-five and sixty-four on your um, student handbooks. I wanted to discuss uh, the importance of Our Lady of the Miracle of Guadalupe. So we're going to discuss Our Lady of Guadalupe, and um, hopefully we get to grow in more of our devotion to her and um, find many different ways of honoring our mothers here on earth and our blessed mother in heaven. Um, and also, hopefully, it ignites us to um, develop and maintain uh, this devotion of the Holy Rosary. So, let's start class. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, I'm sure most of you already know what Our Lady of Guadalupe looks like. But, just in case, this is a refresher. This is Our Lady of Guadalupe. Now, uh, in case you don't remember her story, I'm going to give you a little background on it and the important role that this um, man named Juan Diego played in the devotion of the Mexican people um, learning the Catholic faith and embracing it during a very turbulent time. So, as I showed you, um, the picture I showed you is a miraculous picture. Um, in the early 1500s, millions of Christians were being led out of the Catholic Church by men such as Martin Luther, John Calvin, who denied the authority of the church. So, meanwhile, in Spain, um, the Spanish, the Portuguese, and French missionaries introduced the Catholic faith to millions of Indians in North and South America. One of the most striking examples of evangelization occurred in 1531 in Mexico, uh, Mexico. So Mexico was first conquered by the Spaniards under the command of explorer uh, Cortez or Hernando Cortez in 1513. At that time, the Aztec people of Mexico were under the control of pagan priests um, who worshipped many different gods, including the sun, the stars, um, a serpent god whose name was Quetzalcoatl, um, to whom they offered human sacrifice, to the point that during a, during a religious festival, uh, before Cortes arrived to Mexico, the Aztec priests went as far as sacrificing a hundred thousand human beings in a matter of seven days. So, although Cortez was able to put an end to the terrible ritual of human sacrifice, he was not able to win the battle or the hearts of the Aztecs to the Catholic faith. So one of the few Indians who wholeheartedly embraced the Catholic faith was a middle-aged widower named Juan Diego. He used to walk 30 miles every day for the sacrifice of mass. That translates to about eight to 10 hours a day, depending on how brisk his walk is. That's how long it took him to get to the church from his home he lived in the mountains so to go into the city he walked 30 miles a day 
When's the last time you even walked a mile? Right? So he was clearly a devout Catholic. He embraced the faith. Um, and he would fervently go to Mass every day. So, in 1531, Juan Diego was passing by a hill in Tepeyac on his way to Mass when he met this beautiful lady who told him that she was the ever-Virgin Mary, the mother of the true God, Our Lady, asked Juan Diego to go to the Bishop of Mexico City and to ask for a church to be built on this hill in Tepeyac. So Juan Diego went to the Bishop and told him he had seen the Virgin Mother of God and she instructed him to come to him so that he can build a church. But the bishop didn't believe him, of course, because who would believe a middle-aged widower who fervently goes to Mass every day and walks 30 miles to get to Mass? So, didn't believe him. When Juan Diego reported that back to Our Lady of Guadalupe, of Our Lady, she asked him to go back the next day and repeat the request to the bishop. So, this bishop, whose name is Sumarraga, Bishop Sumarraga, listened again politely the second time Juan Diego comes around. And Juan Diego, he tells Juan Diego that he needs some kind of a sign before acting on such an extraordinary request, which is to build the whole temple for Our Lady. So he asks for Spanish roses right it's a remarkable sign in light of the fact that it was december which is not the season for these flowers so the spanish rose does not grow in mexico on top of that so can you imagine like he literally sent him to come back with a task that he could not fulfill because those flowers were not available in mexico nor was it the season so nevertheless juan goes back to our lady and he says this is what bishop sumarraga is asking for so the third time, the lady says, go back to the bishop and um, let him know my request for a third time. So the following day, however, Juan Diego's uncle is sick. So on his way to um, tend to his sick uncle, he skipped going through the Tepeyac Hill because he wasn't going to be able to meet the bishop's need, the, the bishop's request, and he was trying to avoid running into Our Lady again because he felt like, well, I'm not, I'm not meeting what she's asking me and I can't meet what he's asking. So he felt, let me just take a different route so that I don't come across her. And to his surprise, even though he avoided the Tepeyac Hill, um, the Blessed Virgin appeared to him anyway. So before Juan could explain his action, Our Lady told him, my son, don't worry about anything. Am I not here? Who am I? Who am your mother? Are you not under my protection? Are you not in the crossing of my arms? Are you not my responsibility? Is there anything else you need? Don't worry. Your uncle has been cured. Then Our Lady told Juan Diego to climb to the hill and pick some roses. So surely enough, Juan Diego goes, picks up beautiful roses, red roses at the top of the hill, and brought them back down to Our Lady. In his tilma, which is also another word for cloak. So, as she helped arrange them on his cloak, um, they, she said to him, go back to the, to the bishop and show him these flowers, right? So at this point, he arrives at the bishop's presence. Juan unfolds his tilma, so he unfolds his clo cloak in front of them, and he drops these beautiful roses at the bishop's feet. To the amazement of the bishop and his servants, as soon as Juan Diego unfolded his tilma, they saw the portrait of Our Lady of Guadalupe, which appeared on his cloak, which is this So, the symbolism in the miraculous 
picture of Mary instantly won the hearts of the Aztec people. Bishop Sumaraga acted quickly to comply to Our Lady's requests by building a church on the Tepeyac Hill and by adorning it with the miraculous portrait. To this church, millions of Indians came seeking baptism so that the priests had to employ from dawn to dusk in baptizing these new converts. So he was able to convert all of these hearts of our separate brothers and sisters, and he was able to bring these souls to God. Such an amazing journey, right? So it is estimated that through the intercessions of Our Lady of Guadalupe, 8 million Aztecs entered the Catholic faith between 1531 and 1538. Almost twice the number of Christians who left the church in Europe during the first two decades of Protestant Reformation, which was occurring at the same time. In the words of the Aztec language, Our Lady identified herself as she who crushed the serpent's head, words which to Bishop Sumarraga sounded like Guadalupe, a famous shrine to Our Lady in Spain. So we see that there's a reference to the strong woman in the book of Genesis, um, chapter 3, verse 15. And we also see it in the New Testament in the book of Revelation, chapter 12. So with these clues, God himself identified the lady in the picture as the Immaculate Conception, the woman conceived without sin, who will crush the devil's head, the devil's power. To show how important his mother is in his plan of salvation, God has multiplied miracles with her portrait from 1531 until this day. He has worked countless miracles for the faithful who have gone on pilgrimage to see her miraculous image. So there's this pilgrimage um, ritual where people go to Mexico and they kneel all the way from the outside of the city and they kneel, right? So they go knelt to the church. So there's a trajectory of a specific amount of miles that they travel on their knees to show the extreme devotion that they have for Our Lady of Guadalupe. Um, he has preserved the cactus fiber of the tilma that Juan Diego wore, of his cloak, um, and it has it's in perfect condition, and that's estimated over 450 years, right? And this type of material usually lasts or starts to deteriorate in just 20 years, right? So now you're talking over almost 500 years. Um, the miraculous portrait has also been studied by many scholars and scientists that cannot know how this was produced. They're saying that it was not made with any chemicals that are known to mankind this image that was presented to Bishop Samaraga. The miraculous portrait of our mother of God of Guadalupe has survived many accidents as well. In November of 1921, there was a terroristic plant uh, bomb in the shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe near her portrait and everything was destroyed, windows were broken, obviously it's a bomb, right? There was a large bronze crucifix in front of the picture that was left in the shape of a pretzel, but without making so much as a scratch on the glass in front of Our Lady's portrait. So according to the simple faith of the Mexican people, all of these events simply prove that Jesus does what any good son would do. He looks after his mother and he honors her. So. What are some ways in which we honor our mother on earth? By being obedient, by being the best son and daughter we can be. And how do we honor our mother in heaven? We can pick up our devout um, ritual of the Holy Rosary. It's a beautiful devotion. So hopefully we can see the importance of the mothers that we have here on earth and the mother we have in heaven and we can develop our own devotion. I love you guys. Until next time.